Uh, my name is Anthony Adero. I'm 24 years old. I'm originally from Kenya, uh, on the western part of Kenya called Kisumu, and I've lived in the capital city of Kenya called Nairobi. For six years, I've been an activist. Personally, I've volunteered more than 900 hours. Yeah, I've, uh, I've done a lot of frontline advocacy. Can you ever see your life without activism? We, every day is an activism day to bring change and to bring social justice to the community. Explain uh, what happened to you. What led to the rape that you suffered? On the day I was violated, I could not get, I could not remember what happened. Other than what I could remember, I was in a gay friendly place. I had ordered a drink from the counter. My drink was dragged and and later on to find myself in a in a compromising situation. That's that's what led me to being violated. My drink was dragged and and I could not figure out what happened next. Yeah. I tested positive with HIV. And uh, and this thing reaffirmed my own position that I'm I'm a gay person, I can't change whatever the situation is coming and uh, it really opened an opportunity for me to look for supportive families and supportive individuals who are like-minded and who are thinking about putting the progress and putting the safe space within our own lives. But what is it like to be a gay man in your country? Just imagine living in a place whereby your same-sex activity is not, you don't have, you know, opportunity to, to have adoption, and uh, and you know the homophobic culture and you know everything surrounding heteronormativity. There's fear of incarceration. There's societal stigma. You literally don't have something that can protect you from from people implying impunity and violence towards you. It makes it very complicated for you as a as an openly gay man to live there. Do you feel your immigrants are invisible in America? Do you feel that there's no visibility? There is invisibility of LGBTIQIA, immigrants especially from Africa. Federally, my marriage is like a clandestine marriage and it brings a lot of issues. So th those are the things that we can also discuss. Now that the R74 has been passed, it means that there is, not, there is so much uncertainty in the future. Well, freedom here means to me having whatever you need, whatever you wanted, regardless with how you will express yourself. Yeah. Like for example, if I need a gay club, I'll get a gay club and go and hang out. If I want a pride, I'll wait for the summer to come and I'll have the pride. I'll express myself the way I want. And elsewhere people can't even have pride because there'll be there's buggery law that will chide them for propagating homosexuality. You know what what does, what does Seattle need in terms of uh, immigration and asylum? Let me make it clear that most immigrants coming here are as homophobic as they used to be. So changing their attitudes and changing the way they think about issues is going to take a while. So it will be a failed venture to try to talk about LGBT Africans who are coming for safety. It, it means that something different for them. It's an all lots of different experience for them. And that's something we can always explore and do something about it by just talking about it or doing some sort of capacity so that people also know about LGBT issues and the kind of challenges they face. There are much, much bigger issues that need to be discussed in terms of mental health reaching out to migrant populations and talking about sexuality, talking to their parents about sexuality and why they need to welcome. Why? What would, be, what would make the difference? Because uh, there's little or little known about the migrant's population, the way they, they have accessibility and acceptability of, of the LGBT communities which means that they are, they, is, they are the most and most vulnerable of the community and they also experience a lot of social exclusion. So if 
we as Sosia can you know come in board and start talking about these issues there'll always be a way of reaching the most enriched population of the LGBTIQ. You you have a chance to to make a difference in the lives of, of many uh, LGBTQIA immigrants in Washington State in yeah. Seattle. Uh, what would you do with that chance? Uh, if I'm given a chance to make a difference in, in the lives of LGBT immigrants, I I will definitely re represent the boys and I will represent the opportunities and the challenges that they face by you know having the program that is well informed and has has a lot of capacity to reach out to them. It will be a turning point on how business is done regarding to, to their own issues that matter to them. And and that's something I am really happy that social outreach Seattle has taken up and has made it very explicit that this is what they, they want to do out to the community. I believe in a greater Seattle where people are socially in included into their in, into things that matter most to into their lives for betterment of of the Seattle's economy and you know Seattle's social social conditions and uh, and I really appreciate Socia for being for putting me in board to also discuss about these issues that matter and, and I hope for the best. Um, it's been a tough journey, but it's also been a journey of resilience and learning, and you know, you know, re re refocusing how I have to live my sexual life and the choices that other people, young people, will have to make, and you know, talking about it in a very positive way.